So now that we know what good mathematical writing looks like, how do we actually make some of our own? In this video, we'll look at the technical details of how to follow the style conventions for mathematical writing that we talked about previously, using Microsoft Word as our platform of choice for our mathematical writing. So what I want to do is take an example of a proof from the course I'm teaching right now, Abstract Algebra, and go through the process of typesetting it so that it looks nice, so that it actually helps the reader to organize the ideas best in their own mind and the meaning comes across as clearly as possible. So step one of mathematical writing is just write the dang thing. Once you know what it is that you want to write, just open any old word processor and just get your ideas uh, out of your brain, through the keyboard, and into your computer. So just for example, maybe I'll just open a blank notepad page and just type it up. So I'm going to type up a proof that every cyclic group is abelian. Cool. All right, so I just typed it all down, and I didn't care. I just used whatever sort of keyboard symbols I wanted to to represent whatever notation that I'm going to need ultimately. So I probably want this little thing here to be like a, a bullet point in the middle of the line. I'd like for this in here to be that element symbol, you know, that you use in... in, in uh, uh, set theory. I'd kind of like these exponents to be typeset as exponents so that it looks nice, right? Um, but really, most importantly, I just want to get my ideas down on the page first. And then we'll worry about the formatting and the style conventions second. So now that I've got what I want to write down on the page, we're going to talk about Microsoft Word in this video. Let's get this into Word just by opening up a blank document and just pasting it right in. So here I am inside Word, just opening up a new document. Here it is, it's looking all kind of sloppy. All right, fine. And I'll just paste my thing in here. So, so far so good, but again, this doesn't look much like math typesetting. So now it's gonna be our job to go back through and do the formatting and uh, fix those style conventions that we talked about in the previous video. Step one, fix your fonts. So apply all of the mathematical typesetting style conventions to all of your notation, all of your equations, all of your expressions, anything that's not part of an English sentence needs to be typeset using mathematical style conventions. Now remember, that means the variables are all italics, the numbers and operators and symbols are all not italics, names of functions are not italics, there's plenty of breathing space around your operators, yada yada yada. It's a lot of stuff to keep straight. Fortunately, Microsoft Word has a tool called Equation Editor that knows all of those conventions and can help you to do that without having to think about it. So the way to do it in Word is get all of your math, anything which is math, get it into the Equation Editor environment. So let's go hunting inside of our proof for mathematical notation. First one I see is sitting right here. Uh, so this is clearly something I intended to be part of a mathematical bit of notation. So highlight it. And then from the Insert ribbon in Word, just choose Insert Equation. If you click Insert Equation when something is highlighted, then Word knows that the thing that you highlighted is something that you want to put into Equation Editor environment. And so it changes the formatting. The G becomes italics, uh, and then the operations around it are not italics, just as we would want according to our style conventions. If I also wanted to take this star here and turn it into a different bit of mathematical notation, Let's say I want to use a bullet symbol or something, that little dot in the middle of the line to represent my group operation. I can find those symbols from the Equation ribbon when I'm in uh, Equation Editor. And it organizes a bunch of different common symbols and fractions and other stuff over here into a variety of menus. Um, and it also has some miscellaneous symbols here uh, in this little scrolling panel. And so if I scroll through here, I'll eventually find, oh, there's the, the bullet symbol that I want. If I click it, it'll add it into my equation. So Fixing your fonts is a process of just going through and finding, again, every bit of notation that there is and choosing Insert Equation. Note that this G is also part of mathematical notation. In fact, this whole thought here, G and H, are elements of G, I probably intended for that all to be a part of a mathematical expression. So I'll choose Insert Equation on that whole thing. And then... I didn't want to write the word in here. What I really wanted is I wanted uh, the, the set inclusion symbol, right? the element of symbol. So I'll come and find that in my little panel as well. And now we're making some progress. Right? So if I go through and I do that for, for every mathematical bit of symbolism uh, in my document, already things are going to start to look much more readable um, because it begins to space apart your notation uh, and make it easier on the eyes and therefore easier for the reader to grasp what's actually going on. 
In the latest versions of Word, Equation Editor has some other nifty little tricks uh, that help in this process a little bit. For example, when I want to write a to the power m as an exponent, when I wrote it in my original document, I just used this caret here, the caret symbol, uh, to indicate an exponent. But what Word actually does is kind of nice, is if you put your cursor right at the end of that exponent, then just hit the spacebar, uh, it will actually lift that exponent up into the, the superscript for you. So there are a couple nice little shortcuts that have been implemented actually only fairly recently uh, inside of Word uh, that make this uh, a little bit nicer to do. That nifty exponent trick, though, only works when your exponent is a single symbol long in Word. Here, in my argument, I wanted this m plus n to actually all be inside of the exponent uh, of this a. So for that, what I want to do is I just want to replace this whole expression uh, with a brand new power, a to the power m plus n. I can do that inside of the script uh, menu here in the ribbon just by choosing superscript, putting a down the base, and then clicking up in the exponent and writing m plus n. So one of the things that I personally don't like about using Word is the little things like that uh, that tend to force me to reach for my keyboard over to my mouse more often than I'd like to. Um, but at least the, the options are still there, and there's still a ton of, of sub-menus and panels and stuff inside of the Microsoft Equation Editor that can help you to typeset more intricate mathematical expressions. So once I've gone through and I've gotten all my mathematical notation into the Equation Editor, now I want to go back and look at the other three bits of style convention for mathematical writing. I want to look at the choice between inline math versus displayed math. I want to look at my sectioning, and I want to look at making my paragraphs short and using sh uh, frequent paragraph breaks. So the shorter and less consequential uses of mathematics notation, those that fit easily inside of a paragraph, should live within a paragraph. So if you're just naming a variable or something like that, that's probably best inside of a paragraph. Whereas the longer and the more consequential expressions and equations, especially, that are part of your argument, those should live in display math on a line of their own centered with white space. So let's comb back through this proof and figure out what we want to make part of display math and what we can leave as inline math inside of the paragraph. Well, as I'm reading through this, there are some obvious things that I wouldn't want to make a paragraph of their own like this bit of mathematical notation, where I'm just bringing a group into existence. Let g, comma, c dot be a cyclic group. Um, so I probably that's OK living inside of a paragraph. Um, same thing with sort of these short takes right here, this thing which is definition of an abelian group. Yeah, sure, that can live within a paragraph. But the further down that I get, there are some obvious candidates that jump out to me as things that probably should live on a line by themselves, like this long equation. So g times h is equal to a to the m times a to the n is equal to a to the m plus n. This is really a crucial part of my argument, and it's also a much longer mathematical ex uh, equation than the things that come before it. So I want to make that uh, a part of its own displayed line by itself, centered with some white space around it. Fortunately, Word gives you a nice, elegant way to do that. Just click on the equation so that it's highlighted. You may have to right-click if you're using a PC. But in the drop-down menu that you get over on the right side, there's an option that says Change to Display. And that means exactly what it says. You click that, and that mathematical notation now becomes displayed on a line by itself, centered with an appropriate amount of white space above it and below it. So that little conversion is a super handy way uh, to make your display math uh, be set apart from the rest of your notation. By the way, um, this always sort of bugs me in my math writing. Um, but notice how since this equation was part of a sentence before that had a comma, uh, now the comma is sort of sitting by itself at the beginning of a line. We don't want that. So I'm going to take this comma, and I'm going to put it here inside of my equation so that it's not beginning. We don't want to begin a line with punctuation. So now I've got some display math. Um, so setting these equations that are longer and more consequential to the argument, setting them apart uh, from the writing that surrounds them. So style convention number three now is about sectioning. So I want to look back through my argument and clearly demarcate what are the sections. In this particular example, I just stated a result that I wanted to prove, and then I supplied the proof. So those are kind of my two big sections in this. So let's go back and add those in. I've already sort of noted uh, at the beginning of my proof that that's what I was doing. Uh, but again, following the conventions of mathematical typesetting, what I'd like to do is I'd like to make that boldface. Just again, it gives the reader the cue uh, that we're beginning an important phase. And the function of this, this writing inside of the larger context of a paper, for example, is much clearer. 
One other way you can do that inside of Word that I find also helps particularly uh, is to use what's called a hanging indent. And what a hanging indent means uh, is that we want the word proof here, our, our section name, uh, to kind of be sitting alone on a line by itself and having all of the lines afterwards be indented slightly. So one way of doing that inside of Word is highlighting your paragraph and then from the format menu, you can get that from the top of the screen, or the way I like to do it is by right-clicking. Uh, if you choose to format paragraph, it'll bring up the option to define indents. So what I'll do is I'll just choose to have a hanging indent, maybe just a half an inch or so. And again, why I like that is it leaves the word proof kind of hanging out here on the first line so that we can tell that everything that's indented that comes after it is a part of that proof. Also, the convention in mathematical writing for ending a proof is that you also want to end it with a symbol or, or something that shows the reader that the proof is concluded and that they can move on to the next thing. So the classic mathematical way to end a proof, of course, is with the abbreviation QED, quod erat demonstrandum, which is what we were trying to prove uh, in Latin. Uh, so you can use QED. Uh, other options are to use a, a, a little symbol, like a, a black filled in square or something at the end of a proof. Just something so that the reader knows that the proof is over at that point and they can move on with their lives. So again, I kind of like this hanging indent combined with a QED at the end to really show which portion is the proof. But of course, the statement of the result that I'm proving also deserves to be sectioned. So depending on how important it is in our paper, maybe we call it a lemma, maybe we call it a claim, maybe we call it a proposition, maybe we call it a fact, maybe we call it a theorem. Uh, but whatever we call it, we should give it a section name of its own, too, uh, so the reader understands how important we think it is uh, to the rest of the structure of the paper and everything else that surrounds it. And finally, let's get those paragraphs to be as short as possible. So add frequent paragraph breaks. Make sure that when you're starting a brand new thought, that a brand new thought deserves a brand new paragraph, even if that means that some of your paragraphs are only one or two sentences long. This really does help to increase the clarity of mathematical writing for the reader. In particular, I'm going to want to add some white space, at minimum, in between the statement of a theorem and the beginning of its proof, for example. Um, and when I start a new thought inside of my proof, I want to make that a new paragraph also. So notice what the first couple lines of my proof are doing. They're bringing a group into existence and establishing the burden of proof. We want to show that this is true. Once that burden of proof is established, the next thing I do in my proof is I begin an argument. That's a major shift. So let's make that a new paragraph of its own. Uh, if you want to keep the hanging indent inside of Word, hold down Shift when you hit Enter here so that now uh, it remains indented that little bit. Uh, here I'm invoking the definition of something, but then I make a new observation here, so let me make that a new paragraph as well. So adding those extra paragraphs, again, is going to make this a lot more friendly for the reader uh, at the end of the day when it comes to, to actually understanding what the argument is that this paper is making. Now that all four of my style conventions are met, I think I'm pretty satisfied with this proof that I've written up. I'm going to make it a reasonable size on the page, make it in a reasonable font. And now this looks more like something that you would want to read, which after all is rule number one of mathematical writing. Write the math that you would want to read, and you'll never go wrong. So that's how you can do it in Microsoft Word. There are a lot of other tools we didn't talk about. How do you make tables, and how do you get other kinds of mathematical notation like integral signs, matrices, that kind of stuff. Um, those are things that I'll let you look up on your own at another time. We're not going to use them too much, but these are the basics. These are the things that I think we don't talk enough about uh, as far as how to implement the style conventions of mathematical writing when you're doing your own mathematical writing.